This is Clumbury, a small village in South Shropshire. Getting a mobile phone signal here can be difficult enough. Hardly the type of place you'd expect to find a technological revolution. Here at Clumbury Primary School, there are only 65 pupils and three teachers. Yet ICT has been fully integrated into the curriculum and a range of technologies are used to enhance pupil learning. Rivers by Eleanor and Lucy. And in 2007, they were joint winners at Bechter's ICT Excellence Awards. Even at this young age, the pupils are getting to grips with advanced technology, like video podcasts, blogging, and even filmmaking. All this has been masterminded by one man, head teacher Andrew Davis. One of the main characteristics of Clunbury is that we were really isolated. Recently, I was in a school in London, a large secondary school, fantastically resourced, and they had the ballet coming in one day, the job bread the following day, and it made me think, actually, that rural schools are actually in some way more deprived than some of the schools in the cities. We haven't got access to the ballet, but what we have access to is the World Wide Web, and through ICT, we can bring those into the classroom. So that's given our children the same opportunities and experiences which children in perhaps a large city or town would get. This is a key stage one forest school lesson about habitats. The year one children are going out into a local field to build dens that could be used by local wildlife. Teacher Patricia Greenaway has asked her year twos to document the lesson using camcorders and MP3 players as part of Clumbry's ongoing initiative to incorporate ICT into all areas of the curriculum. What um, are you making here? I'm making a little house for hedgehog. And what equipment are you using? Sticks, trowels and string. Oh, that's very really nice. Because it's such a different environment, there's no actual work to show parents or advisors what we've been doing. So obviously the photographs are a record of what we've done and now we're taking that step further by doing the filming. So we've got more of a detailed way of showing what we've done, which the children can then also use themselves. So it's not just for parents to look at or for us to look at to see what we've done, it's for the children to actually develop their IT skills as well. What animal do you think might go in it? Hedgehog. Yeah. So you have to make sure it doesn't get all prickly in there. Obviously at this young age we've got to get the balance right. They've still got to learn the skills for reading and writing. So obviously it's really important we use the computers when they're needed and not just that they're taking over, which they wouldn't do. And I think the parents are very supportive of that. Obviously there is a danger that they are sitting at the computer screens too long at times, but I think because we've got the forest school sessions, we're getting a real balance and a real mix of different activities going on in school. Intrigued by Teachers TV's visit to the school, another group of budding young filmmakers have decided to make use of the school's technology and are creating a short film of their own. Could you give us any tips about how we use ICT? How can I give you any tips? I don't think I can give you guys any tips. I'm hoping you're going to show me how it's done, to be honest. What do you like about Clumsy School? Um, the, well, the first thing that struck me was how friendly it is and how um, nice it is all inside and the, the resources you've got are, are fantastic, all the computers and the cameras and it just seems a really friendly place. Okay, are you yeah. happy with that? All right, good guys. The one very important thing is to get the balance right between the use of ICT and not using ICT. I think at Clembury we try to offer children a wide curriculum. We have whole class violin lessons, we have French lessons. Kicking the ball around outside is just as important as using a computer. OK then, today's lesson objective is to develop skill in converting measurements. Meanwhile, year five and six are taking part in mental maths. Here, students are using portable games consoles to test themselves and each other. Up to 16 users can be networked together in four secure chat rooms. I'd like Lucy, little group, could you go and pick the chat room B, please? And what I'd like you to do, as well as, what I'd like you to do is actually start with Lucy, sending each other a question around. Anything we've been doing about converting measures. So we're helping each other, we're testing each other on their understanding of measures. Uh, 
One of the activities the children did was all to do with sort of um, measurements. I had two different groups actually working on questions which were suited to their needs. I can give children information quite discreetly about their progress without the child feeling inhibited or embarrassed about it. During the lesson, I can see the progress the children are making. I can see the answers they are submitting, and it shows me their actual knowledge and understanding. That's an interest when you've done there, girls. Ten centimetres into meters. Um, mostly, we use them to like help us with our maths, math skills, and we go on to chat rooms and like Mr. Davis can like talk to us on here and we can send him things back. It's fun as well, and so we want to do like more of it. Three, two, one, submit. Instead of writing in books and sort of wasting paper, you can sort of do it on here, so your teacher knows how you, you sort of work it out within seconds. We can decide, and the children can decide, when it's appropriate to use ICT and when it's not appropriate. ICT is not used for the sake of using it. The pupils are back from the field and the Year 2s have uploaded their footage onto their own online portfolio. Now we can watch the movie that's loaded up on the other computer. Mm -hmm. Lizzie, yeah. do you know what animal's going to live in your home? Yeah. What? Everybody's saying head jump to us. Squirrels. You don't know yet, do you? No. So have you finished, Martha? Yes. yes. The Year 1s are following a more traditional approach and writing up the instructions for building their dens. Later, they'll be shown how to upload the video by the older children. We put some sticks in the ground. I think having the computers here and using them more widely has opened up a whole range of different activities for the children, which I think we're only just beginning to realise, especially for the younger children, how effective they can be. Before, I think we were just using them because they were there. Now we're actually using them as part of the curriculum. We're using them up on the field when we do our forest school sessions. We're filming, we're taking photographs of the children, which we're then using in the classroom. We're then using them to enhance our English work and our maths work. So they've completely revolutionised the way we teach. At lunch, Zara had a sandwich, but a fly came and sat on it, so she had to throw it away. After we Next up is a literacy lesson. Helen Spreadborough asked her pupils to write fictional diary entries about a trip to the zoo. She's incorporating ICT into the lesson by getting the pupils to upload their entries to the web in a variety of ways. These three are creating MP3 files. Do we need to edit, edit any bits or should we just leave it how it is? You could have at the end the monkey. <laughs> Take the effect to it. Um, you, you put the monkey, yeah. sound effects, and then mm -hmm. animals. Chimpanzee calls, is that it? The um, lesson today, the objective was actually looking at diary writing and features of a diary where the children had a chance to look at two different points of view, two different perspectives within one event. Tell me what you're doing. Okay. I know what you're doing. I'm getting my. Diary entry. Di do your diary. Because um, I've finished it, I'm going to post it onto the blog. Okay. The other children, the outcome was that they had a written piece of work that they could put on the blog and put onto EduJam, which is our forum, our site, where the parents can access it. Then I've uploaded it to um, Mr. Davis's site so he can check it for me. The opportunity there is that the children have either MP3 players or um, apples or whatever they're working on, different medium, different ways of working, but they're all ending up with um, an account in a diary. Dear diary, today myself and my family had a day out at the local zoo. Another group are using a webcam and edit software to create a video podcast. I think that'll be too loud. Yeah, well, I think we should use some pictures on that bit because it sounds Yeah, like me. we need like a phone for the ringing so it's not playing. Or it could be um, 
and then we could have a clock. Mm. I thought it was very important that we engage parents and children's learning. The blog is one way in which we do that. We do a lot of podcasting. So aspects of children's work, the children make a podcast of, they put it onto their blog, and parents can actually listen to that at home. So we actually start to engage what the children are doing. We've also got an e-portal system, which means every child in the school has their own online folder for their work. And we have like three pages each, and we upload it onto EduDam or the blog. And it, like every couple of days we check and then see if Mr Davis or Mrs Webber has given us any like, feedback on it. So. As well as using the blog to engage with the parents, Andrew Davis runs an after-school computer club, which gives the adults a chance to hone their own ICT skills. Which one? That one. That one. Yeah. The Zaggy Teeth one. Yeah. To come here and be able to get involved in what they do is a really good thing and the children, um, as I say, can then explain to me how to do things and then we can do things at home as well. So invariably I have to ask them how to uh, work the computer for that sort of thing. So it's been very beneficial. I've definitely learnt things since I've been here. I like the fact that I know what a blog is because I didn't for a long time and there's lots of my friends that definitely don't know what a blog is. And so I definitely feel I've, I've gained um, a knowledge from coming to the class and I'd like to think that they've gained some knowledge and experience from me. <laughs> I do go onto the website, the school website, um, which is very good. And um, we have occasionally put little messages on but but also um, they do put um, art and things on there as well don't you so you can go in and see what they're doing at school but that's only a small proportion really of the work that they do. Our young filmmakers have also used this opportunity to work on their film. Today we've been making a film about teachers TV coming to our school and filming us whilst we're doing our work at school. It's been quite a challenge interviewing some of Teachers TV people and we've been making it into a short movie to show what we've been doing through the day. So what is your job? Um, well today my job is um, I'm second camera. And what is your real job? Good question. While it might not be obvious what we're really doing, Andrew has a clear idea of what he wants. The world is moving so quick in ICT, so a vision which I had four years ago obviously now has changed. My vision is that every child in a school can take their learning home with them via a form of laptop. Laptops are being produced now at relatively low costs, which £150-£200 can get you a laptop which has wireless access, which children can take home, they can use in the classroom, and it's portable. I'd like to see ICT being further embedded in the school, for us to work upon what we've done, look at how we can get better, but with a view at the end of the day of actually providing the best quality education for the children we can.